We've already read snippets of Senator Melton's biography. I first met him about a year or so ago when he brought his daughter and his wife here to tour campus, and so hopefully we're still under consideration. <laughs> He's a friend of this university. He's a pillar of this community, and many of us sleep better at night knowing that He's a leader in this community who follows in the footsteps of Reverend King. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Eddie Melton. Bear with me a moment. Choir, that was, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. To President Padilla, to everyone on this esteemed platform, to the students that gave a wonderful remarks, let's give it up for the students one more time. <laughs> to the faculty and staff at Valparaiso University, and to each and every one of you, good afternoon. I want to thank my lovely wife, Crystal, for being here. She's on the front row that came on the tour with my daughter. I also want to thank my fraternity, the members of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, for being here as well in their support, so thank you. So, Today we're going to have a conversation. Today we're going to discuss an iconic figure. So it's my hope that the words that I say today will leave some type of impression on your heart, stir your soul, and ignite you to lead and serve in your respective communities. President Padilla, before I begin, I want to congratulate you on being the leader of this institution. I appreciate our newly formed friendship and I think it's only right on this day as we celebrate Dr. King that we acknowledge your accomplishment and achievement as being the first person of color at Valparaiso University to lead this institution. Again, I want to thank the faculty and staff of VU for the work of, that this institution continues to do. I want to thank you for what you instill in the next generation of leaders, of the students that are both in this room today, but also in the cam campus and community. But I want to pause for a moment. I want to talk about a specific word because I was reading a variety of the mission statements of the institution. And I, one word that kept standing out to me was purpose. And I want to unpack that for a minute. The Bible tells us wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. I say this because there is nothing more powerful when a person has wisdom knowledge and understanding of their individual purpose. So I thank VU for preparing a generation of leaders that will know their purpose. Our state and our nation will be in good hands with them. So to the students that are here today, those both on this platform, those that are in the audience today, I encourage you to live your life in your purpose and live life on purpose. So let's give the students of VU a hand, ladies and gentlemen, that's here today. As we were hearing the melodious sounds of the singers, you may have seen me reach in my pocket looking for a napkin. Um, as the tears begin to well up in my eye, it's an honor to be here today. 
I was sharing with President Padilla and his wife, around the age of 10 or 11, I would ride with my mother back and forth to her job here in Valparaiso. And I would always ride past this campus and I would see this big building and I never knew what this building was. And to stand here today for my second time being in here is truly an honor and a blessing to be here on this day to talk about a man that we all should honor and respect and cherish his legacy every year, and that's Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. <laughs> to make it a little bit more personal, for a number of years, I've been blessed to work with a variety of national organizations. And not that long ago, I joined a group called the National Black Bank Foundation. And on that board sits Dr. Bernice King, Dr. King's youngest daughter. And as I'm going through my morning ritual, sipping my coffee, looking at Instagram, that's not really my morning ritual. That was kind of a joke. I looked at one of her posts that she sends every year. And on the post that she put on Instagram, and I encourage you to check it out, this is what she said, and I quote, I wanted to see you in color today, Daddy. Love and miss you. I wanted to see you in color today, Daddy. Love you and miss you. It was at this very moment I was reminded of Dr. King's basic humanity. At that moment, I didn't see a picture of this bigger than life, iconic figure. I saw a picture of a friend of mine yearning for her father. And it broke into the most simplest form for me today. But I also have to be re reminded that this was a man that was just an ordinary man. As I seen him in this picture pick up his daughter and look at her in her eyes. She's probably about four or five years old. I said to myself, this is an ordinary man with an extraordinary purpose or calling in his life. In his prophetic speech, I've been to the mountaintop speech, Dr. King revealed that he was not afraid to die. And I quote, like anybody, I would love to see, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will, and I'm so happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Witnesses said that day that Dr. King had tears in his eyes as he took his seat. And I quote from one of the witnesses, it says, this time, it just seemed like he was saying goodbye. Goodbye, and I hate to leave. Less than 24 hours after those prophetic words were uttered, Dr. King was assassinated by James Earl Ray. Dr. King was a prolific leader, a man who gazed deeply into the soul of America and refused to look away. Refused to look away and do nothing about it. I can imagine his anguish. I can imagine his frustration, all for a nation he loved during a time that it didn't love him back. Dr. King was no stranger to this feeling of loving a vision of America that seemed to haunt him in his dreams and slip away every time he would wake up. He pursued his God-given purpose and never lived long enough to even see it come to fruition. His life reminds me of the life of Moses in the Bible. Just like you mentioned, his letter in the Birmingham jail reminds us of Paul writing to us from the prison. Both Dr. King and Moses 
were men that lived by faith, fought to free their people from oppression, lead their people to a promised land, and were not able to enter that land with their own people. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. I've recognized in my own life with Christ how the Lord will grant you a vision and wisdom to bring that vision to life, but sometimes you may not be the one to see it come to its fullness or its fruition. Again, back to that mountaintop speech, and I quote, but it really doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Dr. King relentlessly pursued this change for our nation, regardless of the detriment to his physical person and the safety of his family, and ultimately giving of his life. He was granted the vision of America, a dream, if you will, by God of how our nation should be, coupled with passion, determination, and selflessness to see it come to fruition. So today, as we commemorate Dr. King, his life today, and each year, we have to remember his legacy. Now, we can't talk about Dr. King without acknowledging his wife, Coretta Scott King, and her sacrifices. She said this in a quote in a foreword of one of his final books, and I quote, it is our common tragedy that we have lost his prophetic voice, but it would be compound the tragedy if the lessons he articulated are not, or are ignored or now ignored, I'm sorry. It is our common tragedy that we have lost his prophetic voice, but it would compound the tragedy if the lessons he did articulate are now ignored. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now 2023, 55 years since Dr. King was assassinated. The King holiday, as many of you knew and know, was chartered by a bill in 1983 by Congresswoman Katie Hall, the first African-American elected to Congress in Indiana and a representative of my hometown of Gary, Indiana. This makes this day even more special for me. All leaders must regularly ask ourselves if we're still doing the right thing every single day. Sometimes we get discouraged, sometimes we get distracted, but keep going and keep pursuing that passion, keep pursuing that purpose. The Bible tells us this, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not give up. So don't grow weary to all the leaders that hear my voice today. Dr. King embodied social justice, humanitarianism. Dr. King demonstrated to us that each of us is equipped to change the world starting with ourselves, within our own individual humanity. We are here today, and as you look at your program, the theme is celebrating the value of humanity. Honoring individuals like Dr. King, who have contributed greatly to the betterment of mankind is important. Dr. King left it to us to not only continue his legacy of change, but also to inspire others to see themselves as change agents. So let's talk for a moment about what that means. Since we're in a house of worship, I'm going to continue to go back to the Word of God. I go back to Matthew 5. He says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp or put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light 
to all those in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before us so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, that light that lives on the inside of each of us is not to be stifled, is to be shared with the rest of the world. So turn to your neighbor and say, let your light shine. Let your light shine as communities, as universities, as cities and neighborhoods. We must continue to encourage one another to see ourselves as God sees us and fight within ourselves to keep our light ablaze and help illuminate this world. My friends, the fight to let our individual light shine begins within our own minds and thoughts within our own minds and thoughts. That's where the fight is. Ralph Waldo Emerson said this, and I quote, sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap character. Sow a character and you reap your destiny. It all starts in our minds. It all starts with us within our own individual humanity. In short, destiny is tied directly to and starts with our thoughts. Imagine if your thoughts stay constantly in alignment with God's will. If everybody operated in that way, what type of world would we have? I love to think about that. Again, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. When we think about our communities, we are the most thoughtful and most generous to think of how we as individuals fit into a greater picture of our society and the ways in which we can use our own unique gifts, our experiences and relationships to create the world that we desire to see. Self-reflection, personal development, meditation, and prayer, all these things point to us back to who am I and why am I here? Again, back to that self-reflection. Dr. King demonstrated how personal character development could change the world. He reflected not only on how society operates, but also on his personal character goals and intentions. Dr. King brought so much good to our country, but so much of that stems from the work he must have done first within whom? Within himself. We can only truly change the world if we truly change the world within ourselves. I truly believe God has a plan for each and every one of us, a plan and a purpose at this specific time in history. And I believe in doing so will result in creating a better world and a better America. Like Dr. King, grown, have, uh, I've grown to recognize that our character is very much influenced and molded by our core values. Have you taken time to think about what are your core values? What are those core pillars that make you do what you do? What is that? Mine, I will share with you. Faith, family, knowledge, and community. I just want to take one of those for this brief moment and unpack that. Faith. The Bible tells us now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. This is what I tell my children about faith. Number one, faith is obeying when you don't understand it. Faith is giving when you don't have it. Faith is persisting when you don't even feel like it. Faith is giving and being thankful before you even receive it. Faith is trusting even if you don't get it. Faith is believing when we don't see it. 
Dr. King even spoke of having faith. He said, faith is taking the first step even when we don't see the whole staircase. Have you operated in faith lately? Or are you operating in fear? It's either one or the other. You have to pick or choose. And today I choose faith. I pray that in 2023 and the years to come, we walk in the same relentless pursuit of a better self that Dr. King had in his visions. This is not a political event, but many of you already know that I've declared that I was running for a specific office in the city of Gary. One of the primary tenets of the work that I'll be doing is intended to invest in the people. In the State House, we talk about infrastructure, we talk about roads, bridges, airports, and so many infrastructure things. But it's time for us to invest in our human infrastructure. I know that as one person, I am limited and what I can do each day, but pulling together the resources, the people, and the innovation who can help our community bring forth the best, brightest minds, institutions like this can help bring that to fruition, bring those leaders and entrepreneurs and small business owners. That is why we truly believe in change in our community, especially in the city of Gary in the 21st century. Dr. King's leadership provided a mouthpiece and model figure to millions of seemingly voiceless Americans who fought and felt forgotten and forsaken. Our legacy as leaders is less about us and more about those we inspire to be leaders themselves and the change that come as a result. Let's show up in our full capacity to our jobs, for our families and for our communities we, we all know it's easy to get up and get caught up in the mundane things of every single day. But let 10 and 20 and 50 years go by. Do we really want to look up and see that we had minimal progress because we did not operate in our full purpose? We didn't operate in full faith? It's that individual humanity that we have to tap into. Oftentimes, history paints Dr. King as only a dreamer. And I want to set the record straight. The I Have a Dream speech was not the only message that Dr. King had. No. Dr. King was a radical, revolutionary leader. Just listen to some of those remarks. And one of the speakers said this. And this came from a speech in 1967. And I quote, a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death, end quote. This next speech came at the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1967. And I quote, the evils of capitalism are as real as the evils of militarism and racism. The problems of racial injustice and economic injustice cannot be solved without a radical redistribution of political and economic power. That doesn't sound like a passive preacher to me. These are the words of a revolutionary leader that knows his God-given purpose and wasn't afraid to do it. One could only hope to have the courage that this man had. That's why I pray daily that God gives myself the spiritual fortitude to operate in his purpose, even when it seems like the world is against me or you or us. I go back to scripture again as I prepare to close. Romans 8.31 says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? 
I hope we all leave here today feeling more driven to operate in that purpose. We're in a new year, and I challenge you to lead like never before. I challenge you to serve like never before. And like Dr. King, I challenge you to love your fellow man kind like never before. And remember, a leader is merely a servant who has the humility to serve others. I thank God and I bless you and I pray that you have a beautiful rest of the week. Thank you.